Good. How are you? Good. 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 Dandavat Maharaj. Dandavat. 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 Yeah, Falguni, no one there. Oh, yeah. She's just come in now. Alma, yeah? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Okay. Falguni is don't they? Maharaj, we have a, a, a guest today. Uh, she, we have told her a little bit about Krishna consciousness, but she does not know much about it. So um, she's, she's joining us today and uh, Gora Chandra is saying, please be kind. Okay, that's Alma. Is that Alma? I don't know if she's there yet. She's there. Uh, yeah, that's Alma. Hello. Hola, Alma. And where, she, where are you from, Alma? Um, born in London, but studying in Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. Okay. And very good. Happy to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. And Sri Hari, where are you? I'm here in Brazil. Oh, you're uh, in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you check in that box under the table if there is a mouse? There's, there's Gora Chandra too. <laughs> Recién, ah, rapado. Ah, Recién rapado, no? Recién rapado. The new look. <laughs> All right, very good. I said I newly, see you, newly, newly buzzed up or shaved or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Very good. And Saraswati, who's in the London temple there? You and Krishna Mohini? Krishna Mohini, there is uh, Tavania. Tavania Maji, Gora, Nara, they just coming back from the temple. Oh, they were in the Arti. <laughs> uh, Gora Narayan, we have Ananda. Bhakti, there is uh, Dauji who is doing the puja right now. Yeah. Supriya, Krishna Vinodini. Krishna. 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 All right. Happy to meet everyone today. Uh, so last week we just had Govinda Maharaj's Divine Disappearance Celebration. And now everything is kind of... Last month was a lot of holidays. Now this month, the next big thing is Nishinga Chaturdasi on the 25th of... of May, right? Yes. Okay. So are you are you still in lockdown there in Lo in London? Yeah, it's eased a bit, but yes, some kind of lockdown. Some kind of lockdown. And how uh, Alma, where are you? Um, I'm in Newcastle. How how far is that from London? It's a long way. Pretty far, yeah. It's almost Scotland. Okay, and are you in lockdown there too? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, everyone's kind of protected by these lockdowns, although they're maha boring. <laughs> Um, 
But I heard from Jai Ram, his, his family's in Delhi and it was pretty, um, pretty drastic there. Yeah. His wife's, his wife's father, um, Abba, her father got COVID and he passed away. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. And, and uh, her brother's seriously ill in Prema Sundari in Colombia. Her sister is, 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 is pretty ill, but getting be apparently getting better. Her oxygen levels went, went up. So, but I, I was talking to a lot of people online, and I don't know. There's so many people that they don't want to get the vaccine. So I guess that's all right. If you're if you're not too old, I guess you can kind of uh, don't don't mind my my uh, words. But if you're, I guess if you're kind of younger, you can kind of make that mistake, and you won't have to pay for it. So you know, yeah, but. Persons who are kind of older, I think it's Chai Ram. He wasn't a, in favor of the vaccine, but he said after what he saw what happened in his family, he thought everyone should get the vaccine because he thought the, some of these new variants are pretty, pretty severe. Ananga Manjari, where are you? Ananga, uh, but yeah, I am London. You're, Okay. Where are you originally from? Oh, I'm from uh, Bangladesh. Oh, you're from Bangladesh. Oh, it's nice. Well, to your meet family you. are you? you? Were born in England, weren't you? Oh no, I was born in Bangladesh. I lived there for about oh, yeah. two years. Yeah. Excuse me, my it's mistake. Okay. It's okay. okay. <laughs> I I spent many years in Kolkata, and. And also in Nabadeep, which is actually closer to Bangladesh than than Kolkata is. And many of our many of our devotees are from are from Bangla, from Bangladesh. So and many of our acharyas also were from Bangladesh. But now a lot of the persons from Bangladesh, they went to India because of the, well, let's just say, the change in climate. Uh, I guess that's change of climate is, is uh, what's the word for that? Um, euphemistic, I guess. I remember a line from way back from that from a song that said this the smell of a uh, the smell of a world burning or maybe it's just a change in climate That's in this song so anyway but yeah the whole so it's it's good I I'm, I'm hoping to be able to come back to London you know, uh, I don't know when, be, because one of the one of my concerns about traveling is I, you know, I got vaccinated, so I'm not so worried about, you know, I'm not so worried about uh, catching virus or anything. But I didn't want to put devotees into a situation where would there would be a lot of people together and they wouldn't be protected. So I was kind of concerned about that, you know, especially I, I thought, well, one thing, one thing that masks are good. So for large, gar for gatherings, but uh, still, I didn't want to, I wanted to wait till, a little bit till the situation changes enough or and enough people are protected. So we could get everyone together, have kirtan, have songs and worship and, and speak and be with the devotees and go for walks in the park. You know, what was the name of that park? Um, Virginia Water? Huh? 
the Virginia, where, what is it? Virginia, Virginia Water. Water. Virginia Water. That was a very beautiful park. It was nice walking there. And there's nice places around the, around the West London Temple too. Uh, so, Ananga Manjari, are you, are you in the East London Temple? I mean, is that where you go? Um, I normally, if I'm going like uh, regularly, I would go to the Green Street, East London. But like for staying for a few weeks, I go to Haddon Cross, West London. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, so I am desired to be with all of you and also the, to be in the temples. It's been a while, right? I was going to go there last March and then everything kind of closed, so... Recently, I had a situation where I was trying to bring Pitambar, who's from France. I was trying to bring him here from Guadalajara. But last time, he overstayed his, t his stay by two days because they, they canceled all the flights because of COVID, and it took him a, it, he had to wait to get another flight out. So he was late, two days leaving. And so when he landed... When he landed in San Jose, they interrogated him, put him in a police car, put him in handcuffs, drove him to oh. the, uh, drove him to the Oakland airport, and then uh, flew him back at cost of the government uh, back to uh, Guadalajara. And so I thought that wasn't a very cheerful way of receiving visitors. No. So now I'm trying to get him since that he overstayed his visa waiver. Anybody from Europe, since he's from France, he has a visa waiver. He can be there for three, be here for three months. But he, he was, he was very committed a very grievous crime of overstaying his stay by two days. So now I have to get him another visa and Reminds me of when I when I landed in India. Uh, we took so long. This was way back, 1971. We we missed the connecting flight because it took us so long to get to get through customs. And then I went to catch our connecting flight, which, and they said you missed it. And then I said when the when's the next one? They said about three months. <laughs> <laughs> And I asked why that was, and they said because all the flights were being run by the government because, I don't know, there was some kind of strike or something, which is kind of common in India. So anyway, I, I'm trying to get him a new visa, and then I find out, oh, the only, the only problem is most of the embassies and consulates are, are, are closed or working at minimum capacity, so... So they said, you have to make an appointment. And I said, okay, what, for an interview. And I said, when's the next appointment available? Oh, about 400 days. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, I'll go meet it. I'll go down and meet him in Mexico. But as I said, that had that, that contingency working where I want to make sure that if devotees come to visit me, that they that they won't be, you know, giving some illness to each other. So that's my only concern. Otherwise, and how is he come back, Maharaj? How is he? Yeah. Very good. I was trying to also get him vaccinated here, but he, now he's getting vaccinated in in uh, Mexico, and I. Uh, and I think it's what that dear British vaccine, AstraZeneca, I think maybe it'll be. Mm -hmm. That was made there, right? Yeah. The only only not-for-profit one, apparently. Oh, really? Oh, see? Very, that's kind of nice. All right. 
There have been a few people that got some um, handful or a couple handfuls. People have got some kind of clots and brain clots. But that doesn't seem so severe. I've been I've been working with brain clots my whole life. <laughs> I just got a message from Saraswati saying Ananga Manjari has a question for you. Okay, where is Ananga Manjari? Oh, uh, I had one question some time ago about uh, how could we like a uh, turn like a bad association become a good association? How could we? turn like a bad association into a good association oh turn, how to turn bad association into good association you seem very nice and you seem like you know you're seem like you're young and 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 seem like your consciousness is probably very very Fresh and clean, we might say, because of your youth. I, when I when I joined the mission, all my association was bad. <laughs> so, one of the things is by by joining with the devotees, and then I was openly, you know, uh, talking about devotional service and things like that. Many of my, much of my bad association then didn't want anything to do with me. It, you know, at first maybe they thought it was a fad, but after a, after a certain amount of time, they thought that since I wasn't so much any longer interested or participating in many of the bad habits which we indulged in collectively, then they saw that they thought it was kind of like a stick in the mud, so to speak. So uh, they didn't. They, I didn't have to exert myself so much. They really didn't want to have anything to do with Krishna consciousness, so or anything for that anything openly devotional or spiritual. So I didn't have to do very much. I didn't even like. I didn't even harangue them. I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even bother them. I didn't try to convert them. I just, they just saw that I wasn't interested in uh, the normal social activities like uh, going out, eating, eating meat, drinking, uh, and, and, and getting intoxicated and all those things, which were the scent, the cornerstone of their activities and mine too, I might say previously. So once having given up all those activities, then a large percentage of the people just stopped trying to associate with me because they, they thought I wasn't going to load, I wasn't any longer going to indulge in those activities. So it, I didn't have to really, I really didn't have to tell them anything. I didn't have to like, um, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't have to do really do much just for them to see that I was changed and, and, and I didn't want to, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to associate with me as much as I didn't want to associate with them. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, by developing a higher taste, you automatically give up on, on what is lower taste. In other words, uh, if if you're if you don't know anything better then then you you'll have to be satisfied with what you have but if you develop a taste for something that's you know different or or higher then then you'll be able to give up the things of a lower taste you can't really give up you can't really give up things unless you develop an attraction or a taste for something higher how can you give up? How can you just, I mean, I guess some people they put on for, for nicotine, they put on nicotine patches and things like that. And maybe that helps them. But I'm, I, I don't think that's what you're talking about. You're talking about you want to be able to give up bad association 
and develop good association. So the good association is the, is the first thing. That's very important. The way of associating with devotees. Now, uh, perhaps, so what is the principle of Green Street now, David Sheesh? Uh, nobody can go there or, or what is the, uh, what 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 is the activity of the temple? Sorry, Marge, we lost you for a moment there. You froze up a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me check and make sure. Okay, yeah, I'm on a good line here. Yesterday, something happened in the nighttime where it went out. So, um, so what are what are do you have any? agenda, or as you would say, any schedule, schedule for the, uh, for the uh, Green Street Temple? Uh, just the normal, you know, Mongol RT and midday RT and the evening RT and class every day. Okay. But we don't broadcast the class every day. Okay. So Mananga Manjari, uh, how far away from the temple are you? Uh, it's not too far by train. It's quite close, actually. And, and you, can walk, you can walk there? Uh, no, it, by train, it's like at least half an hour. But when I go with the the they it's like, a, like, like half an hour. Okay, so... Anyway, if you can go to the temple, that's good because then you'll develop some, like you said, your interest in, in better association or good association. So I think that's the, that's the first step to get the good association and develop some attraction for that to be able to associate with devotees. Then that will automatic re, automatically reduce the amount of time you have to associate with persons who who you consider to be bad association. But my question is a little bit like, uh, if someone's association is bad, is it there a way that their association can become good by any means? Uh, it depends on depends on how much for for instance how close of friends they are with you. Uh, uh, I don't know. They're like a, like a school people and like a friends of my siblings. Friends of you of who? My siblings. Siblings. Oh, siblings. Oh, with your siblings. I don't know. I I have a very close relationship with my brother and my sister. And uh, neither of them are devotees, and I and unlike other persons, I never tried to really, you know. I mean, they came they came to visit me at the ashram. They stayed two days. That was just to see me, and they they stayed up. Uh, they stayed with me here at, for two days. But that was a that was a rarity. Like my my father and mother. Um, you know, they didn't know anything. They didn't really want to hear too much about Krishna consciousness, but they never cut off their friendship or affection for me. They maintained an affectionate relationship. I mean, my mother used to used to call the call the mission that she called it Hair Krishna because it's spelled H A R E. So she thought it was some kind of hair, like a rabbit, like Rabbit <laughs> Krishna or something, but. So she called it Hare Krishna, and and you know my my parents they maintained affection for me. They didn't really want to they didn't really want to know too much about Krishna consciousness. They they weren't really religious and in, in, interested in any any religion. They were just normal people, kind of. Um, what can you say? They 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 weren't antagonistic towards Krishna consciousness, but weren't interested in knowing too much about it. And my brother and my sister, we have always been very close. So they visited me and, but they never really, they they heard me say some things and they remembered a few things, but 
not too much interest and, and until like um, last week or whatever it was, I drove up to see my brother. He was, he's about, uh, about 800 kilometers from where I live. So I drove up there and saw him for a couple of days mm -hmm. and drove back. Once I got back, I was really surprised. He sent me, he sent me a, a message that said, uh, "Can you send me the Facebook, the Facebook page of 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 the mission here?" He wanted to see the he wanted the Facebook page, and I was kind of surprised. That's the first really first interest he ever expressed in wanting to know something about the devotees. He wanted to see our Facebook page. So, uh, I think one of the mistakes in Anga Manjari that devotees make is when they talk to their family or friends, they're too dogmatic and that turns people off. If you try, it's just like, if you just try to, what's the word, uh, What's the word for hitting somebody with a club? Brandish or? <laughs> Will that work? Yeah. Bludgeon, that's a better word. <laughs> if you just try to bludgeon people with it. You understand what the word bludgeon means? It means like they hit somebody. If you try to hit them with, 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 things that you say, no, that's wrong. You can't do that. That's sinful. If you do all that, if you talk like that, like most people today, they don't relate to the word sin. It kind of, kind of went out of the dictionary, you know, <laughs> last time they were burning witches. I don't know. Uh, I'm just talking Western dictionary. Like in, in, in India, in your language, you, you can say that, that, that you can say pop, you know the word pop, right? So maybe if they're Bangladeshis, you can use that word pop because it's not, it's not as drastic as it is in English when you say sin, you know, that, and besides what is sin, it's hard to define. But most persons who are speaking Bang Bengali, they can understand the word pop. Therefore, the pizza place, I don't know if they have it in, in, in in England here there's one uh, one pizza place that's called Papa John. Yeah, we have that, yeah. Yeah, so Papa Papa means sinful and John means person. So you could say the name of Papa John means sinful man. Sinful man <laughs> pizza. I mean that's Bengali, it's not English. Papa <laughs> in English we know means father and John is good old John, you know, but, uh, but Papa, Papa John in Bengali means sinful man. <laughs> Which, I don't know if, if you translate it and opened up sinful man pizza places. Maybe, I don't probably know, be a big hit. Be a big hit, but you'd have to, you'd have to change it. So it wasn't sinful man. It has to be, what has to be more not so gender specific. What can we, what can yeah, we say? Yeah. It'd have to be sinful person. Sinful person pizzas. Uh. Uh. Maharaj, I, I, have, I have a question for you. Yeah. Why, you know I'm, still, what I'm still answering though. Hold up, we're still, go on a little bit longer with the Nanga Manjaris because she asked me that question and I, just, I said a few jokes, but they didn't really give, give her much of an answer. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to help that how can, so as I said, by developing a higher taste, you give up lower taste. So that, that will apply to you, but that's not going to apply to your, your siblings. So with your siblings, I think it's very necessary to continue with a natural relationship with them, an affectionate relationship with them. Srila Govinda Maharaj, he said that the basis of, of 
Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat of our, you know, say so so called propagation of Krishna consciousness. He termed it heart to heart transmission. So if you have an, a heart a re, a relationship which is based on feelings of the heart and natural affection, you can communicate more than you can by dogma. So I'm really I I mean, and I'm telling you from my own experience because I was I was young, maybe not so young as you even, but when I was when I joined when I was young, I was very dogmatic, pushy and obnoxious. And probably that turned people off. Now, admittedly, some of the people I was with, I'm happy to have turned them off because I didn't want their association because there is, they were kind of like, they were nice, nice people, but it was covered with many, many layers of pure nastiness. <laughs> they were, they were quite, they could be quite annoying. They could, if somebody was just normal, they could just openly laugh at them. So I didn't consider that. Later on, I could see the, the you know, what's, what can I say? They were just, uh, well, I won't go into the activities, but but you and Anga Manjari try to deal affectionately with people. Don't, don't just, you can say something about what you like about Krishna consciousness, but don't, don't try to present it so forcefully that people feel intimidated or that you're pushing them. And I think if you can do that, they'll see that you're still the same person, <clears throat> but that you've developed some, let's say, some interest. And, you, and one thing that you can use, a word that you can use in describing things is about the development of consciousness. Because we're not trying to we're not trying to present things as a religion or even can you can say what's another word for religion uh, or even idea of uh, so, something quote spiritual just remember that the the presence of the jiva or the soul is seen by consciousness you can tell the presence of spirit by consciousness and everybody is conscious every single person is conscious even bugs and trees and animals they're all conscious so they're all they're all of a spiritual nature there's a soul in everyone plant animal insect i guess even in the virus maybe there's a, a soul there but it'd be hard to reach them uh, so anyway the presence of, of the soul is seen as consciousness. So we want to talk about consciousness and we want to talk about changing consciousness. And, and you can see there already is a development of consciousness going on throughout the world. For instance, when I was growing up, you know, being a vegetarian, if you if you said you were a vegetarian, we're not strictly speaking vegetarians because we're not just like, you know, inclined. It's not that we're just inclined to eat vegetables. No, devotees are naturally vegetarian because they're offering everything to, to Krishna, to, to Gurudev and to Mahaprabhu. And that's what they and the devotees have learned to cook very many nice things. So that's also a way of attracting people if you I that's one of the things I always thought about Krishna consciousness is I didn't want to become like like a, a Vishnu's witness you know stand on a corner with a Bhagavad Gita and just start preaching to the you know are you saved and no I rather thought of it as that if I'm eating something nice that I like, I want to share that with other persons. If someone comes to my house, and for instance, I'm eating something, this may not be appealing to other persons, but if I'm eating something like a, a, 
a chocolate cream pie or a banana cream pie or something, which is mildly interesting, you know, and other people come to my house, I will share it with them. I'm not going to just eat in front of them. But because I like it, and maybe they'll like it too, then I, I always think of, I always thinking of, of being involved with other persons and talking about Krishna consciousness as sharing something I like. And that's where maybe Govinda Maharaj's words of heart-to-heart -heart transmissions will come in. If it's something you really like, then you can communicate. And if it's something that you become rather kind of... Uh, Vishnu's witnessy about, then people will not like that. They'll feel like, you know, they'll feel you become a born again Krishna. Not that, not wanting, not wanting to speak against anything. It's just I have some very wrong jokes, but anyway, so, okay. So I think Ananga Manjari, you can understand a little what I'm saying, right? Huh? I yes, I can understand. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. I'm all right. And you, Gora Chandra, ke paso? You know that uh, this book, the the um, no, not that the the search for the loving servant. There is a there is this idea when I finish that book about grace and how how when you think that you are coming closer, sometimes you think like it's a um, your own interest into into spirituality or religion or all the words that you're mentioning. But for what I got from that book, it says like no no no, it's he that's coming to to basically looking for you. He's searching for you. So. When, when the other day you were mentioning about these issues about different person with different ideas and, and you know, like being uh, in a different direction, like, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking about this um, wrong path, okay? So um, how, what happened with, with, with that kind of grace that they got at some point because they definitely they got the interest but what happened when when people got derailed and, and they find like, well, this is what I like. I need to have nothing to do with something that is sincere and real or 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 bona fide, but it becomes like a like a ghostly rajasic thing, something like that. What 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 is the, the thing that is happening that behind what we see? Okay, so the first thing you mentioned the book, uh, the Lord's loving search for his lost servant. Now the backgrounds of that was that they, they uh, Srila Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj, he, he published those books. So first he had published The Search for Sri Krishna Reality, the Beautiful. That was the first book he published. And that was talking about how the soul is looking for something and ultimately they say in the general terms is a tato brahma jigyasa. Now that you have achieved the human form of life, you should search into what is Brahman, what is what is the divine spirit, so a tato brahma jigyasa. But Srila Guru Maharaj further defined it. He said it's not just the search for brahma jigyasa. He says it's ultimately we're satchidananda, where Satchidananda, the soul, is eternal, the soul is e conscious. So then Guru Maharaj asked, if we are eternally conscious, what are we eternally conscious of? So he said, the answer is Ananda. Ultimately, we're looking for happiness. We're looking for happiness. Everyone, who is not looking for some form of happiness? And they, they may search for that happiness, as you're also indicating, in, in diverse ways. And sometimes that search wrongly, wrongly, you know, understood takes them in a path which is going away from spiritual consciousness. But that's somehow or other, it's 
their form, whether they know it or not, of they're still searching for something, but maybe maybe the search for just what we might call bodily happiness is interfere with their spiritual development. And if not, maybe it's a search for mental happiness, which has taken them a little off the track. But anyway, that book was saying that the highest form of happiness is rasa, is the relationship which which the soul actually establishes with the supreme. And when that relationship is established, that will be a loving exchange, and that loving exchange will be a form of great happiness, even to the point of what we might say is ecstasy. So then, after some time, Goswami Maharaj had published that book, and then Govinda Maharaj said, well, this book is only half of the half half of the consideration. He said, search for Sri Krishna. You're looking for, we're, everyone's looking for, for Sri Krishna, but Krishna's also looking for us. And that's where he said, that's the other half of, you could say, the equation, which is uh, the Lord's loving search for his lost servant. And that's the book you're citing. So Guru Mar said, half of it, half is the search for Sri Krishna reality, the beautiful, and the other half is the Lord's loving search for his lost servant. In other words, we're looking for something. Ultimately, we're looking for Krishna. We're looking for what is spiritual and divine, what it will, only that which will completely satisfy us. And at the same time, Krishna is a person, and Krishna and his, and, and though Krishna and his, you can say, divine, divine representatives, Mahaprabhu, um, who is non-different from Krishna, and Gurudev, you know, they're, Krishna is sending so many persons, and he's looking for us. So we're looking for him, and as much as we're looking for him, he's looking for us. So I thought it was necessary, to, or good, to, not necessary, but good to mention that, you know, Half of it is us us searching for something beyond ourselves, and at the same time the Lord looking for those, looking for the lost souls or lost servants. So and and that book is very beautifully illustrated. They hired, you know, what was it, Indra Sharma, who painted all, painted all these beautiful paintings, and one of them is when Gopa Kumar, who elevates himself through different what can you t say, call it, different levels, uh, different spheres, different places he goes, which represent different forms of devotion, like, uh, but they're actually planes of, plane, planes of existence. For instance, um, there's the level of karma, then there's the level of, of gyan, and, and, and then there's the level of karma, bhakti, uh, what is it, um, karma mishra bhakti, jnana mishra bhakti, all these different levels, you know, which are defined like we might say karma mishra bhakti is going from normal karma level ex of exploitation to, to, to karma yoga, we might say that where one is offering the results of one's activities to the Lord is a form of yoga. Yoga means divine connection, to make a connection. Uh, the word yoga means to make a connection. So by that karma yoga, that is a plane of existence, but it's not pure bhakti. But at the same time, one is offering the results of one's activities to the Lord. And so someone could say, well, what's wrong with that? No, nothing's wrong with that, but it still maintains myself as the point of interest that, oh yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to eat this. I want to do this. So I'll offer that to the Lord. So, okay, here. Oh, by the way, my dear Lord, I made this. Please take it first. Okay. But it's not, the, the center still is a little bit on the personal level, not the actual pure devotion, what I'm doing, 
for the satisfaction of the Lord. I'm just offering the results of my activities. Uh, David Sheesh or, or Saraswati, do you feel that's a, a fair characteriza characterization of, of, of karma yoga? Yeah, Marge, for sure. Okay. And Saraswati, you understand that that what karma karma yoga just means to offer the results. Do you think that's is that a so when I say that still one maintains one's own sense of what I want and I'll offer the results of what I want to the Lord? Do you think that's still? I mean, somebody who's really a karma yogi could say, no, 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 that's not yoga. That's just that's just an excuse for yoga. But I feel okay whether it's where whether i'm characterizing it purely or not i'll still present it that way and jnana jnana mishra jnana mishra um bhakti still is has some focus on knowledge but uh what's the can oh you can david says you can quote the verse jnana jnana prayasa eva and then I know what follows. Okay. I can't remember the rest. Yes. So, Vasini, you were saying? The Vasini knows everything. Okay, Not everything. Like, I'm, I just recollected <laughs> that. Jeevan Tisan Mukaritam Bhavadi Yavatam. There's the next line, is that one. Okay. So, also, that means one should get some superior guidance in what one's doing in addition to other things. So we also have the uh, uh, verse by Srila Rupa Goswami where he says, Anyabhi lashita shunyam jnana karmadi anavritam anukuyena krishnanu shilanam bhakti rutama. That in that verse, it means that bhakti is Bhakti is beyond both karma and jnana. It's leaving, we're leaving the idea of mundane knowledge or the infatuation with, with information, fact finding, which is so many. So I, I cannot say I've done that because I spend so much time on the internet and some of it is involved with that, you know, like, oh, this is of interest, but okay, all right. But Rupa Goswami says we are to leave all those kinds of pursuits aside of just our mundane knowledge. And Anukuyena Krishna Nushilam Bhakti Rutamats. Uh, the basis of bhakti is those activities which are pleasing to Krishna. Anukuyena Krishna Nushilanam. You know, Bhakti Rutama. That's pure bhakti. And, and, and pure bhakti, anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karmadi and avritam. Pure bhakti is free from karma and jnana. So, okay, then, uh, anyway, I was talking in, in respect to, I'm trying to keep the, the thread going of what uh, Gora Chandra, he asked me about how is it that people, well, I don't know where I went up to now, but he asked me, uh, how is it that people go off the rail, so to speak, right? Is that, what happened to Gorachan? There he is. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, you shifted from the bottom row up into the top corner. I don't know <laughs> how that happened. <laughs> Maybe I should go to the speaker view, I'll try. The speaker view there now i can see gora chandra and falguni okay. the, the question is maharaj like is about like you know the somehow the, i might be totally wrong but but i have seen like mercy like doing it all the job like we are trying to do very little and then things happen and then you say wow that i didn't do anything to the surf you know, the, the nice association, like the nice uh, um, uh, experiences that I have with uh, so many, uh, well, like now, like being able to talk to you, to me, is like, it's like a, like a very uh, on the surf thing. And I mean, you might not think like that, 
but um, but you know to be able to see Guru Dev every day, uh, every week, uh, and to be able to participate in something that is like you're saying, like not uh, myself, like not just myself, a pleasure, myself, uh, hedonism in, in the in the world. We, I, I don't feel that uh, we are doing that. It is something that is being given. So what happened when? What happened? One, when one, one, thing, one, thing. one thing. All of us, we can say. Well, how is that happening? Well, all I can say is, all of us, all of us, you, you happen to know, you have friends in high places. <laughs> Speaking of the Lord, you know, and his and his pure devotees like like our Acharyas, Govinda Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Acharya Maharaj. I mean, you have friends in high places, so that's a some some you get, you know, just like the description of Srila Guru Maharaj that that the devotees are like bees getting intoxicated on the honey but at the same time while they're collecting this honey some drops fall down and then he says more or less that he's harvesting what falls from those bees and getting that honey he, he he's getting the droppings which they're working hard to collect so we're all like that we're getting some benefit because we are in association with devotees and now okay this Zoom or 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 Facebook. Okay, I, I'm I'm not so normally so keen on social media, but at the same time, collectively things are happening, and I'm able to associate with so many persons, which which I normally would not have their, the the grace of having that that nice association. So I could just consider it. The Lord's mercy, Sukriti, something, something good is happening. But I'm also returning to your question because you said, how is it that people are going along and, and somehow or other they disappear, like they're gone, they're just... Uh, and all I can say is, well, that's... I guess that's, I guess that's part of the nature of, you know, of devotion. You can, it's not like, it's not something, as Srila Gurumar said, it's not something that's like a sweet ball that you can just consume at one sitting. It goes on. It goes on every day. It goes on every minute. What does it mean, the, the process of, of sharanagati, the process of surrendering, what is that all about? Is it is it just like, oh, the, the army has invaded where I live and now I'm faced with bayonets and rifles and they say, you surrender. Is it, and oh, okay, I can do that one time. Now, okay, I'm changing my loyalties. Before, before I was anti-you, anti but now I'm pro-you because I'm surrendering to you. And then only, you know, you can say that, one time I just outside my house I changed the flag and I put the new flag and everything like that so but this is not like that this is not like one time surrendering or at least maintaining the facade of surrendering one time because I'm afraid for my life no this is surrendering with love and it's going on all the time you know and they're they're and it, it can be seen in that way. For instance, I once heard it, this is not a very good example, but I once heard a, a story someone told about a taxi driver. And this taxi driver, he's driving in traffic and he's, go, and he's always, always in a bad, he's always in a bad mood He's cursing at other drivers while he's driving. He's very angry, and and that's his that's his consciousness. But then, on Saturday, he's going to get his girlfriend, and he washes his t 
taxi thoroughly and cleans it out. And he puts his girlfriend in the same taxi, the taxi that has caused him to be in bad humor the whole week and swearing and cursing at people. And he's putting her in the, in the taxi. And he's not even putting, turning on the meter. He's driving her for free. And he's so pleasant, pleasant about the whole thing. And he's just enchanted to be driving her in the taxi. Now, what's the difference? What happened? It's the same taxi. It's the same experience driving. And in one, in one case, he's so annoyed and annoying. And in the other case, he's very lovable and, and pleasant. What's caused that change? Well, I would say that there's some kind of, something's being done at least with the facade of a loving, some loving relationship is there. He's very enchanted by being with his, with his friend and, you know, and that's caused him to look at the same activity with a different consciousness. Or if a woman were paid to be a nurse and to take care of children that weren't her own all week long and to clean them and to, you know, feed them. I mean, maybe if she's, maybe she, if she's a wonderful person, she could do that in a very good mood. But I'm just saying that generally, if the Generally, the same person, she'll have, she'll do those things perhaps out of a sense of duty for her job. But when it involves her own offspring, we will say in the ideal situation, she's a loving mother and, and she's happy to be able to take care of her children. It's an act of love. So I think, I think that the whole situation changes when it's done in a loving mood and otherwise one can go through all the motions and we see so many devotees they can go through all the motions and they can pretend that they're doing it all out of devotion as now i even speak something from my own experience you know like you know uh what can you say i mean it's not a question of appearance it's that actually goes deeper than that and, and, and unfortunately, if it doesn't go deeper than that, you can see that somebody may just say, oh, I've had enough of this. I'm giving up on this. I don't want any more of this. It's just too, I, 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 I just, you know, and why do they go away? Because somehow or other, there's this thought, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? I mean, that sounds gross. But if somebody thinks that I'm doing this, but I'm not getting enough, you know, I'm not getting enough personal satisfaction. Therefore, I don't have so much faith for this. So I think I'll, I'll look for something else. And I've seen devotees, I've seen devotees with that consciousness, then they can say, okay, maybe for me, I need some form of impersonalism or Buddhism, because that doesn't involve any personal commitment. Anyway, that's kind of how I, today I'll answer that question this that way. And Maraj, um, our friend who's staying in West London, Maya, she has a question for you. And what happened to Anonymous? He doesn't ask any questions anymore? No. No, they've um, disappeared. Obviously, they're fully satisfied with your answers. And oh, with, maybe uh, they changed their name. Maybe. Okay. This question is from Maya? Yes. yes. Uh, well, let's see. I want to see a close-up of Maya. <laughs> Can you, uh, Okay. Hello. All right. And where are you from, Maya? From Lebanon. Lebanon. Uh, You're from Lebanon. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been in London? Uh, Maybe... Just uh, four or five months. Okay. All right. Nice. Nice to see you, Maya. So, what is your question? So, oh, I don't know. It's. Uh... 
It has to do with the question that uh, ha ha has been asked just before. Uh, Gora Chandra asked about the people who would leave the, the path, let's say. Uh, I was just wondering what about the people who never entered the path, people who have always been hermetic, do we say hermetic, to the idea of a god, of an existing god, how can I tell such people, uh, talk to such people about God in a just rational way without um, using any arguments uh, based on my faith? Um, from a Krishna consciousness point of view, how do you see this? How, what kind of arguments can be given? Uh, I don't know if it's a, an ad, uh, appropriate question. I don't know. I feel okay. like it's... So your, your question is basically uh, how to talk with people who don't have any uh, really idea of a personal conception of God. They don't have that conception and you don't want to talk to them necessarily just in terms of, quote, using religious vocabulary or based on your own faith you want to know exactly. how to deal with per persons who who are new to many con these concepts is that is that kind of like your question exactly yeah yeah We're presenting rational arguments uh that uh, they would understand because because it's neutral arguments not based on the revelation on 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 faith in uh, any kind of revelation and you want to and you want to be able to communicate with to them something of the idea of the existence of god is exactly good? so yeah to then little by little uh show them that it's not so irrational to believe in a loving god in a person who loves us ultimately i would like to to be able to say that but before anything i i need to say with rational arguments that god exists uh yeah, I don't know. So, My question so, might be. No, I can, I can understand. Maybe something lots of your, time. I can understand something of your question, and it's a nice question. Mm -hmm. uh, because strangely, people talk about God and all that, but they, there isn't so much conception of God as a person, and there isn't so much conception of. Um, of the qualities of God. P rather, people tend to think of God as some kind of impersonal entity at, or if God even exists at all. In fact, all the time I see that it's very fashionable, or maybe that's the wrong word, it's very popular for people to be atheistic. Uh, and I can understand that. Because a lot of people have a reaction against religion because they've seen so many abuses that go on in the name of religion. And even it can come, come down to the level of, of religious people being nasty to other people who aren't supposedly religious because they're not religious, therefore they have the right to be nasty to them. Or because they're not of my belief, then one can be... Uh, patronizing and mean, even vicious. I've seen that, I, I mean, I, of course I've seen it from both sides, but I've seen it from where somebody who like is on the street talking about God and he sees me in this dress that I'm wearing and he goes, goes ballistic because he starts saying that, he's saying I'm, I'm you know, he starts, Talk, talking against reincarnation is, and, and first of all, reincarnation is not one of my core, it's not one of my core beliefs that I, sure, I accept, I accept the transmigration of the soul and everything like that, but it's not like I'm hung up on re, reincarnation. But anyway, it's hard to communicate because there's been so much, so many wrong things done in the name of religion. And therefore, People associate God, the, uh, the word God, with religion, and they think of the abuses of religious people or the abuses of religion. 
So I can understand why as soon as people hear the word God, they think, oh, this person's a bigot. This person's, you know, somebody I don't want to associate with. Mm -hmm. But leaving that to the side, for me, on a, a, more, a more personal level, I think I will consider that that it is somewhat limited in, in, in vision to not recognize that life itself is a spiritual experience. Leaving religion aside, I think somebody has to recognize life itself is not easily quantifiable. It's not something you can just say is like mundane or based on chemical or physical laws. There's so much more to life than that. So for me, it's uh, if, if somebody's actually of open vision, we don't have to, not, not just a question of God or religion, but it's a question of understanding what the nature of something of the, what the nature of life is, even if you don't, nobody can answer that or understand it perhaps, but you have to be able to say there's something spiritual or mystical or beyond your understanding about life in, first of all, I mean, how can we just, how can we just like put life down and say it's, it's, it's just something that obeys physical or or rational laws. It's not like that at all. That won't be my. That won't be any open person's, uh, you know, vision of life. But perhaps that's perhaps thinking in that way is a little. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not really in touch with reality to expect that people will see that. But that's the first thing. I will try to see first of all. And where I said in the beginning, I want to speak in terms of consciousness. I want to speak in terms of consciousness of what is, what is my consciousness? What is my relationship with other conscious living entities? And if I can understand that my consciousness, okay, as uh, whatever I am, my consciousness has some limitations. That is, my consciousness is based on corporal or physical or bodily conception. You know, it's it's limited. I can't tell what is going on with universal consciousness. I can't tell what is in your mind or in Ratnavali's mind or Ananda Govindor Subhasini or Rama's. I can't tell what's in your mind and I can't tell what your experience but I have some idea of my own consciousness. So then, but we see that the conscious, at least I'm going to just speak in, in, I don't know if this is, if this is a good way of communicating, but I, let's just say that there is something beyond my consciousness. And I experience that all the time with, in dealing with other people. And we also can see that the consciousness in collectively of the world, it's also influenced and changing. I remember when I was very young, I, I read, I think I mentioned this once, I, I think I, I, I read a book, I think it was by, or a play, I think it was a play by Ibsen. You know of Ibsen? Uh, he wrote a play, I think it's called Enemy of the People. And he talked about how somebody who was in his terms or what the terminology of others was what you would call an intellectual vanguard. And the whole idea of the play was that there are certain intellectual vanguards which are like 20 years beyond other people. Their, 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 their intellect, you can say, because he's dealing with intellect and not necessarily talking about consciousness. But he's saying that there are people who are intellectual vanguards, and they're beyond. They're be, you know they're always ahead. They're always ahead of the general populace. By the time the populace catches up with them, they're twenty years beyond. They're always ahead of persons. And the idea that one of these persons was talking for the in terms of the betterment of the town was seen as an enemy because he was 
beyond the scope of normal person's thinking, that he was in, interested in their well-being, but they could not perceive on his level of intellect, and therefore they saw him as an enemy, somebody who's rocking the boat, somebody who's asking them to accept something that they're not interested in, etc. But, but I will say that Krishna consciousness, we're talking about spiritual consciousness, we're talking about consciousness. Consciousness is the presence of the soul. The soul is seen as consciousness, as conscious. So there is a transformation of consciousness which has happened. You can say, I can say that what were the values and what were the values and what were the many of the habits that were going on, say, 50 years ago, those values and ideas have changed. They're not the same. They're not the same as they were 50 years ago. Some, some things have evolved for betterment and some things have evolved maybe worse because we're not exactly in, living in an, enlight, in an enlightened age. Kali Yuga is not known for general enlightenment, but we do have, I would say some things, strangely enough, and this may be grasping a little too far, but I think some things have actually been influenced collectively by devotees' consciousness. You know, I, I, I can see that, for instance, when I was when I was young, what was, anywhere you would go, basically the, in the West, the diet was meat and potatoes. That was that was that was the basis of you know you go to a restaurant. It's to order some, you know, French cuisine, or some, or some other kind of nationality cuisine. I'm talking. French cuisine is just a joke because, you know, French is very fine food. But, but anyway, it was fine, very finely prepared meat and potatoes, perhaps with wine or something to cook the, cook the meat and potatoes. And, and okay, there is so many, even in those days, there were so many other kinds of food, Chinese food, uh, Mexican food, uh, Italian food, uh, so many things like that. Like I mentioned Chinese food, which in America was called chop suey. When I went to China, I asked to do it. The devotees wanted to take me to a, a restaurant in, in, in Sichuan. And they said, they said, uh, you know, would you like to try some Sichuan food? And I said, well, you mean, so, is it something like chop suey? They said, what's that? They had no idea what the term chop suey means. I don't know if they have that in London, Chinese food called chop suey. But chop suey was a term invented by people who came to the West or to America, they mostly from Hong Kong, was kind of chop suey, a mixture of different things and chow mein and all that. But, but <laughs> basically, basically when you're in, in China, they cook rice in a rice cooker, and then there's so many vegetable and tofu and mushroom preparations prepared and then served with the rice, and then you mix things. But, but they didn't know what chop suey was. Anyway, there was ex existence of different foods. But I, I, think, I think in modern, in modern, in modern London, in many places, most cities in America, there's a, a proliferation of so many different kinds of, of places where somebody can go for vegetarian food or vegan food or, or, or they have Thai restaurants and there's this and that. I mean, there's so much variety, so much change. So I, and I think the popularization of some different forms of eating, you can say more healthy things and everything, I think it, to a certain extent there is, has been a little influence of, you know, the devotees and their talk and everything. I think there's even a little of that influence involved in people's, you know, attraction to different forms of eating, not the same, not the same, you know. So anyway, 
So we're dealing with the idea how to approach people and how to give them some idea of a personal, a personal God. And if people can be expand their idea of their own consciousness to understand that there may be or there is supreme consciousness and that supreme consciousness has to incorporate everything that's on an individual level. I have, I have likes, I have taste, I have, I have, you know, so many things on a personal level and the supreme has to include everything that I'm experiencing and more. And perhaps in that way, I can talk to people about the idea of a personal God, that whatever I am, whatever you are, the Supreme has to contain all of that and has to contain something more than that. It has to incorporate that which is in everyone. And that means personality. And, and even from a young age, people are, are praying you know, for some kind of mercy. You know, I remember so many prayers when I was young. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, to take. That was a childhood prayer. People used to say that. I don't know. Maybe they, I don't know if they had that prayer in London. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. You know. But if there isn't a personal God, who am I talking to? Who are children talking to? Who are people who are people approaching or asking to give them some relief from their miseries? Who are they talking to? You know, an impersonal Brahman that has no qualities, no personalities, that doesn't hear anything, that doesn't say anything, but is a very divine and ex all exist <coughs> blob, hmm. just a big blob of consci no a big blob of consciousness, but no personality, and therefore, it's a god that is always impersonal and politically correct. You know, there has to be some remnants of personality and person's conception of the Supreme. It has to contain everything that they have and more. And if it doesn't, it seems to me that it's limiting. So in these terms, I can talk to somebody about something that which is beyond my perception and not talk just in an impersonal way because people are actually looking for something that gives them happiness, that something's higher than themselves and something that instills the quality of mercy, and all that has to be a person. It can't not be a person. That can't, those kind of qualities cannot exist in an, a supreme that's impersonal. Otherwise, you have no connection with that. Then you might as well just go open some, some you know, charity work or something. If that's your either the highest you can get a. Of, of, of spiritualism is just to speak about some impersonal entity that has practically nobody can know about. Which, of course, many people, many people adopt that idea out of convenience and out of a sense of, you know, laziness when they're talking. To, anyway, I'm putting it in these terms. I, I just maybe, that's how I would, you know, I think the idea of, we can communicate the idea of personality be to people because everything is personal. And we hear in the we hear in like the the what is it? Uh, subjective evolution of consciousness. That's a nice book. There, Guru Mars talks about the Chitta Bas, that in order to be able to experience something inanimate, you have to bring it up to the level of consciousness. And you have, and therefore the ancient seers saw everything as conscious, and that's not, and that, that's not talking about pantheism, that's talking about how you can experience inanimate objects, well, inanimate objects like the sky, the clouds, the the mountains, the the lakes, the ocean, water, you know, so many things. How you could experience, you have to experience them on the level of consciousness. 
And Guru Maharaj says that involves personality. And modern physics is, that's not so far removed from modern physics when you talk about, what is it, in quantum physics they say that the that which is observed is influenced by the consciousness of the observer. So there are some considerations of the inner reactions of consciousness. Anyway, I'm just talking, you know, I don't know, I don't know what, if what I'm saying is even logical, but I'm just talking about how I will be able to perceive or communicate something of the existence that the divine is a person, because it has to encompass what I myself have and more. Uh, is Ratnavali there? How are you? Thunderbats Maharaj, I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Maharaj? Very good. Is that your mother? Yeah, just, I was just feeding her, sorry. Trying to multitask. Oh, that's very nice. I met your mother that time, she's so nice. <laughs> she's a bit covered in soup, but there she is. <laughs> she's a bit, yeah, she's sorry. Maharaj, she's a... Covered in soup. <laughs> okay. How are you, Maharaj? How are you keeping? Please, ex ex please exp express something of my uh, affection for your mother. Okay. And Subhasini, how are you? Dandavats Maharaj. I'm I'm very well, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, good to see you. Happy to see you, Maharaj. What's the name of the place where you live? I live in uh, Wexford. Uh, it's called Wexford, south uh, of Dublin. It's on the east coast, uh, on the coast, uh, a two hours drive from Dublin. Yeah. I still have the desire that I was that one year going to visit you and then all of a sudden Ramai passed away and I had to get back, but I still still feel that I have to visit Ireland. Yes, Maharaj, we, we really look forward to that time. It can come sometime, yeah, okay. hopefully soon. Ratan Chakrabarti, where are you? Uh, Dandavad Maharaj, Dandavad, Dandavad. Dandavad. In fact, uh, I was connected actually uh, by the um, uh, mercy of uh, uh, devotees in the, in the West London devotees. I saw the, you know, Sarshati Didi. Uh, so I, from there, uh, they recommend me. Actually, I am very happy about uh, their association. I am living nearby this uh, West London temple. Okay, and where are you? Are you from Kolkata? Uh, I am from Bengali, yes, Maharaj. I am uh, no, no, I, uh, Bangladesh. There, there. Oh, Bangladesh, okay. We just had conversation with Ananga Manchari. She's, she's, from, she's from Bangladesh also. But I, I, uh, I was living long time in Belgium. Uh. I was in Belgium. You're in London now. No, yeah, a couple of years, two and a half years in okay. UK. So before yeah. I was in Belgium, but uh, I got the. Uh, it's my great fortune to have the association in uh, devotees in West London. They are very nice. They are very. I am very, really, really, very happy about the association. I found really new life. Uh, okay. I don't know how much I can develop because it's my. Uh, my how much I can develop my uh, spiritual journey, but I like to develop because I need mercy. Devotees mercy. Oh, they're they're here now. They're the West London devotees. They're hearing, they're hearing you. <laughs> so all of them who are raising their hand, I I am really really to have their association. You maybe whatever the moment of devotees association, how much value I cannot imagine because yeah, that's. That's what it says, and you know, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva City Holy. Just by a moment's association, 
with the devotees, one gets all, all city. One gets all so, so much perfection in one's life just by a moment's association with a pure soul. Oh, in West London, they're very good. They're a very nice yeah. association. Really very nice, very nice. Recently, Maharaj, we last week we have a cel uh, one uh, celebration about this um, Maharaj uh, that um, uh, disappearance day. But it was uh, we had a good opportunity to have devotee association about um, Hori Katha about um, uh, the um, uh, reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita and Bhajan and Guru Puja. Everything was very very nice, and many many devotees they came around UK. It was really amazing a festival and lovely dishes, lovely prasadam, very nice. We enjoyed really nicely. And my children were very happy. This is the first time they enjoyed nicely as, as a devotee association, very nicely. Yeah, that's the only thing we're missing from these Zoom conferences. We can't distribute prasadam in this form of eating together. <laughs> yeah, really. We have to find some way of digital, digitally trans trans <laughs> what, do you, what how can we do that digitally transmitting uh, virtual, virtual meeting yeah prashadam yeah yeah virtually, <laughs> to be able to share uh, nice cook prashadam and serve everyone digitally i guess <laughs> really it was very nice it's very nice yeah so Jaya, Jaya Lalita. Jaya Lalita. Prabhat Pranam Maharaj. Dhanavad. Where are you? I'm in London. Ah, okay. Yes, I'm in London, but hiding. <laughs> hiding in London. Yes. <laughs> How you been? Uh, everything's going on nice Good. Uh, I still, still seeing how I can travel and at the same time I think I just have to wait a little longer before think before I can before traveling becomes what can you say uh, uh, I don't know before 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 traveling becomes res resumed again. You know, even a lot of countries, you can't even visit them any right now. For instance, India, Thailand, they, you can't, you can't, they're not accepting even visitors. So, I, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much for your answers. Okay. Thank you nice, so much. Nice hearing from you, Maya. Uh, Maharaj? Maharaj? Yeah. Um, it, it would be nice if uh, Ratan Prabhu can tell him, tell you the story how he met, uh, how he connected with the, with the devotees here. It was very special day. <laughs> He's a silent. We can hear him. We can hear you, Ratan. Okay. Uh, yeah, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Say anything. Yeah, Maharaj, actually, this is really very auspicious, actually. I know. If sometimes, it's, uh, you know, there's Ozana Sukriti. You know, this okay. Ozana Sukriti, this word, Ozana Sukriti, unknown. Agyata Sukriti? Agyata Sukriti, yes. Agyata or yes. Uh, uh, I don't know what is my Sukriti. Uh, it was Sriva's appearance day. We are going outside. After a long time, we are, you know, this situation, this uh, pandemic issue. And uh, and we are working. Actually, it was material visit, material journey uh, with my family. We are going some other because weather was nice in a sunny day in the outside. And after a long time walking around, and then we are coming out, and, and suddenly me and my wife was there. And uh, actually, it was an auspicious day, Srivash appearance day. We are uh, actually we are fasting, but my children were taking some 
ekadashi feast ekadashi food something and we are we become hungry also and we are coming back to home suddenly we found you know maybe you know lavanno didi was there at that time i did not know her and i saw suddenly one devotee was coming with a job of it i feel was wow, so amazing oh, what was the amazing uh, power of uh, sri bash uh, thakur sri bash pandit so suddenly when i saw we become amazed uh, me and my wife was very my wife first time uh, she noticed and she told me look 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 see that is the devotee is coming i said how devotee will come so then uh, i was thinking is joking but uh, honestly uh, she was next to me and then we are discussing about uh, this thing and then uh, he was presenting about um, uh, mahaprabhu the deity is there uh, Go, um, govardhan uh, giriraj also there so then i become attract to visit in the temple although it was not i was not quite sure whether we can reach the bhajan time sandha aroti time uh, evening aroti so even though i tried to join uh, to see the temple but i was uh, running quickly and uh, although my uh, children was not happy to join they they mentioned another day to join but i was desired to see even not to see the temple room but maybe outside the building but i was there uh, fortunately and uh, i don't know they they entered the uh, open the door and um, and uh, after that we we are joining the aruti it was amazing and uh, the deity also very nice lovely <laughs> everything was bhajan kirtan was nice i was really uh, uh, attracted by all this thing and finally the prasadam also and prasadam service uh, uh shubhash uh, uh, didi uh, uh, uh saraswati uh, yeah. saraswati didi's uh, sister uh, uh, is mohini uh, mohini didi mohini krishna mohini didi she was very nice although she is not talking very little talking but uh, sweet very nectar I mean, she is not talking very very long but whatever her mood was very nice very sweet uh anyone can attract i mean like is a very very devotional power so uh, her word was not so long but i well, I, I i had a question please how is it that you were fasting for shrivas takur's appearance day Do, uh, were you before involved with other temples uh moras honestly i i follow also iskon temple also i follow okay very good is content i i was following long time long time the, there is another time maybe i like to discuss also i have lot of misfortune or, or i don't know what are the thing i i am still challenging many way uh, because i could not complete my i cannot honestly maharaj i cannot do my japa um, the certain round that is i am challenging to maintain my work my materialistic way of maintain my life and i cannot do certain round of japa and the japa quality also not honestly i am not so so good quality of japa also that is why even i am sometimes mechanical i complete my round but honestly it is not um, i am i have to to open to you i am it's not quality is not good because mm -hmm. my, sometimes i do my round but sometimes my mind is not not doing right to it Well, so many of us we are mechanically maintaining our life, not just mechanically chanting our rounds. Yeah, Maharaj, this is the, my mistake. Please give me your. Maharaj, it's not not your mistake. It is a condition of so many of all of us. Then uh, sometimes in the morning time, I feel I don't know. I feel uh, honestly, sometimes I can do. Sometimes I I when I have some other job, I have to move quickly because I cannot do. That's why I, when I read the verse, uh, I used to think about that verse. Savai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhaktira dhoksa je ahaitu ki ya pradiyat ya sama sa ya ahaitu ki ya pradiyatas sam pra. What? Come on. Savai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhaktira dhoksa je ahaitu ki ya pradiyata ya yat ma suprasidati. So that will satisfy everybody, but 
I used to think, how can how can it be a haituki a pradiyat, a pradiyat, yeah. Yeah. without any interruption and without any material motivation? Because it's like you said, some days I feel very good and some days I don't feel good, like I can't do anything. Some days I'm very enthusiastic and sometimes I'm very discouraged. And and then also, and how can I say? that it has no material motivation when generally everything I'm doing has some material motivation, either, either even bodily consciousness or mental consciousness, but some material motivation. But then I heard Srila Srinamar say that the understanding is it's not coming from my side. It's coming from above down to us. He's saying that, that Om means that what you're looking for exists that that is the meaning of om what you are looking for that exists and that plane of devotion exists eternally whether we're on that plane or not but by the mercy of the saints by the mercy of the vaishnavas it can descend down to us and then you can say one meaning one meaning of a haituki is that it, you can say it has no material motivation, but you can also say uh, that uh, that plane of devotion exists. It's not something that depends on us. That already exists, and and that it has no interruption means it's irresistible. It cannot be resisted. So when we talk about the higher plane coming down to us, then we can understand things that it's not depending on me, whether I'm enthusiastic one day or whether I'm not enthusiastic one day. When that flow will come down to us, then there is no material motiv motivation because it is not a material plane of existence. It is a spiritual plane that always exists, the, the devotion of the saints and the devotees. And that can descend to us by the Lord's mercy. And when, so it has no material motivation because it is a spiritual plane of existence and it has no interruption means that it cannot be resisted. Just like where I live, there are many surfers. People go to the ocean on surfboards and they're surfing and uh, say waiting hours and hours to catch some wave. But actually, if you're at the beach, and a tsunami comes, a tidal wave comes. You don't have to worry about catching that wave. That wave will catch you. That wave will carry you. You don't have to worry, oh, I'm gonna ride this wave. The tsunami comes, it'll, it'll carry you, whether you're on a surfboard or a bicycle or whatever you're on, it will carry you. So th that tsunami, what can we say? You could say it's unstoppable, it's, unre it's irresistible. So that's the kind of wave of devotion that can descend to us by the mercy of the saints, by the mercy of the Vaishnavas. It doesn't depend on our efforts. Some days I feel good, some days I feel bad. It's not depending on us. If we're able to get the mercy of those Vaishnavas, that mercy will come down to us regardless of what, what state. So you, you said it, you said, my, I have, you said some Sukriti, by some Sukriti. You, you said Agyata Sukriti. So that's very nice, Agyata Sukriti. That Sukriti unknown to me. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did to get the association of devotees. And certainly, as far as I can, as far as I can see, okay, I admit I was looking for something and I had not found it. I was looking for something and had not found it. My, my activities were not what you would call, uh, certainly there was no punya involved. There was no pious activities involved. It was not pious at all. And, it, and nothing that I did to, I wasn't looking for Sukriti. I was looking for something, but I didn't know what I was looking for. But Agyata Sukriti, that Sukriti came to me by the mercy of the Vaishnavas. So it's very nice. You had that experience. You met with the devotees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed, Maharaj. This is a, also at that day, or the Sri appearance day. Even I did before uh, fasting. 
So this time it was very, very special. Whatever the, I got the, the special mercy from uh, Sri Bhash Pandit. And also afterward, when I entered the temple room, Krishna Mohini Didi also very nice. Uh, the devotees was very nice. And I really, I found there is a different kind of taste. You asked me, I I know there is, I have some experience in the tem uh, temple, in uh, Iskon temple. But uh, here also I found there is a different mood. There is a mood is, uh, I mean, I feel really, really, really um, bhakti, like as a prema bhakti is different level. Pure, uh, 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 that is a pure, purest, something, something more, I mean, the uh, mood is different. I mean, I feel really nice in Mahaprabhu's special mercy. Yeah. Okay, I think you have a special kind of, some special feeling because I know devotees, they'll, they'll fast for, they'll fast for, Akadasi, or they'll fast for Janmashtami, or or Gaur Purnima, or they'll fast for Nishringa Chaturdasi, or maybe Ram Nomi. But you're actually fasting for uh, for Shrivas for Shrivas Thakur's Avirbhav. Then not not so many people are fasting on that day. They're observing. Sometimes they will observe and they'll talk about Panchatattva and about Shrivas Thakur. Very nice. Uh, that is one of the places where Ma Prabhu is always present in Sriva Sangam. Okay. So you, now, Maharaj, please, uh, nice. Also, you explain very, very nice. Actually, this is the our essence of our bhakti zoga because uh, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, you may, you reciting. Um, that is a is a real dharma. Uh, we have to abandon our other sitting uh, religion, actually. Yeah, you mentioned one, one, two in Bhagavatam, I think. Yeah. That <laughs> so, uh, so we have to follow properly, and then we can. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj, please. Thank you. Dandavad. Dandavad, Dandavad Maharaj, please. Anyone else, anyone else have any question? So... Alma, nice to see you today. Uh, you said you're in Newcastle? Is it? Yeah, I'm studying in Newcastle. What are you studying? Um, marine biology. Okay. Right near, right near where I live, there's uh, in Monterey. There's a whole big marine biology, like they get they, so many species they, they bring in from the ocean and then they have them for a few months and then they release them again. And there's Mon Monterey Aquarium, big, very interesting aquarium. You, you did, have you seen anything of that? Um, not really. Um... My course this year has been more sort of climate related and about atmosphere and gases. Um, but the marine biology you're involved with is is dealing with the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, Deva Sheesh. Yes, much. Now we started a half hour early with the idea of not interrupting anyone's dinner. Right? <laughs> we started so that people wouldn't go too late. They could have dinner, go to take rest, and all that, and not have to interrupt their dinner. So, what time? Now we started at ten thirty. What time, ideally, shall we go to? About that uh, much. <laughs> About if eight. About eight thirty. Uh, yeah, so. I think that's two hours, right? So that's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Faguni, qué estás haciendo? Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I actually have a question, but I'm going to think right. about it and formulate it properly because just. Goes okay. on and on, and then next week I'll I'll present it. 
Okay, how how is yours and Gora Chandra's? What is it? A restaurant? It's, it's a, all right. We'll we'll be opening in two weeks, so we'll okay. be busy. Okay. Today. In the, just, in the meantime, take away. Okay. Right before I came here, I was eating a rapist. So. Okay. We'll serve for rapists when you come. Okay. Hey, Rat Rat Novelty, who's your cat? I just saw some cats in, very interested in uh, in the camera or something for us. Nice. And then on to Govinda. Okay, so we're getting nor now towards our our appointed time. Well, we have we have some more minutes. Shall, shall we stretch it out or end it? <laughs> So, and Saraswati, how is your uh, Ratan Chakravarti met with Krishna Mohini? Krishna Mohini's there. How are you, Krishna Mohini? <coughs> Everything is good. How is Maha Mantra and your daughter? Uh oh, looks like West London Temple froze. Uh oh. Now it's unfroze. Okay. Como está tu hija y y y Maha Mantra? Eh, están muy bien, Maharaj, trabajando. Okay. Okay. I asked her how her uh, how her daughter and. Maha Mantra, they're living in Spain or? Sí, Maharaj. Eh, ella está viniendo del trabajo ahorita, no, no puede conectarse a esta hora. Okay, she's working, she can't, she can't mm -hmm. connect at this time. Her name is? Uh, Se llama Sundari. Se llama Sundari. Oh, very beautiful name. For the kid also, she is taking, uh, giving the lecture. I hope that my daughter will follow her lecture. Yeah. Shama Sundar is young. I mean, maybe not. I knew her when she was very young in, in, in Navadip. They were all, I think, at, were they going to school there in Navadip? Krishna Mohini. Even the Shama Sundari iba a la escuela cuando estaba en Nabadip? No, Maharaj. Ella ya había terminado la escuela, la secundaria. Okay. Atendía el book room. Okay. Yeah. All right. She told me. Shama Sundar wasn't studying in Navadip. She had already finished her studies. And she in charge of the book room. Nadie más va a comer de los nosotros a ti. Que nosotros no vamos a hacer. Sí, sí, si quieres yo como un poquitillo vuelto todo. Seguro. Sí, seguro. Con el mismo algo por igual. Pues mira. No, voy a ayudar también a hacer la tarea. Sí. Right, Navadip, your, your cat looks like a gentleman. He looks like it has a bow tie. It looks like he has a bow tie on. It's, a, um, it's his collar, Maharaj. Yeah. He has a tendency of getting lost and running away, so it's got his telephone number and address. Okay. It looks very... It looks like a tie. Looks Seems like, like he likes the Zoom class. He <laughs> looks like a very... He listens to Kirtan every morning for four hours. Really? Very refined <laughs> cat. He has, doesn't have much of a choice because that's what mom listens to for four hours in the morning. He listens, so, he, he, your, your mother listens to what? To uh, Mangalarti, Kirtan, like live things that you get on the internet from from India, from Mayapur. She she, she kind of um, look, watches the Mangalarti video ah. for four hours in the morning. Okay. So you 
Your cat gets so and creaky also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lucky cats. Yeah. He's getting prasadam. Huh? He's getting, he's getting prasadam also as well. Oh, yes, he's at prasadam. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> sorry. By the mercy of Gurudev, yes. <laughs> Does he eat rice? Not a big fan of rice, but likes paneer, like everyone. <laughs> paneer, okay. <laughs> uh, now he's shy, going away. All right. And Ante Govinda, how are you? Hello, Maharaj. <clears throat> Very happy to see you. Good to see everyone you. also. Okay. Working now. Trying to get rid of a, a cold for the last five days. Going on. Okay. Gorichandran Falguni, happy to see both of you. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much for your reply. Very nice, always a pleasure to see you. And uh, well, I hope that we see you next week. Okay. Well, on Saturday, possibly with the Mexican people. All right. Sri Hari Totobon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. My Danavat pronouns. It was very nice. Uh, to be where here. where are you in Sao Paulo? No, no. Uh, I move I moved from, from Sao Paulo like ten years ago. Now I live in the countryside in a city called Uberlandia. Uberlandia. Yeah. It's in the south. No, it's kind of in central Brazil. It's like 400 kilometers from Brasilia. Uh, no, it's it's like in the, in the middle, in the middle of the way from Sao Paulo to Brasilia, which is the capital of Brazil. Uh -huh. and where is Manaus? Manaus is way, way north, uh -huh. like a huge, a huge, uh, continent away from here is a very very far uh -huh. i was in brasilia and i say i was went to travel throughout brazil but in uh brasilia was very curious because when it was built they built it with all modern architecture but now it is all it is all modern architecture, which is just no longer modern. It looks like exactly. it, it's it's modern to the 1960s, right? Yeah, it's very strange. It looks like modern archi architecture, which is very out of out of fashion, and and exactly, and and, and I, I think from there I could learn that that's not a good I, good way of building a city with modern architecture, which in 40 or 50 years will look very yeah. strange and out of place. Yeah, we, we should stick with the classics. <laughs> Whatever classics are. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Happy to see everyone. Subhasini. Dandavat Maharaj. Dandavat. So Saraswati, I like this new schedule that we got, that uh, at ten thirty instead of instead of uh, at eleven. Eleven, which is my time for you. It's the difference between six thirty and seven. Yeah. So so it's better at six thirty. Yeah. Not so late. Anyway, my Dandavat pranams to all of you. Uh, happy to meet with all of you. Happy, happy, to, happy to be with the devotees. My good fortune to be able to, you know, come come in contact with all the devotees in in UK and in Ireland and nice. Come on. Maharaj. That's Maharaj. Someday I'll come to your restaurant, Gorachandra. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Looking forward to that. Okay. We'll give you arepas. All the arepas that you can eat. With black beans. <laughs> okay. 
Jai Shilabhakti Pabhan Janadan Maharaj Ki Jai Jai